downtown and spin the moo and get short vam shoes. He's a new man, too. <laughs> Marching and I'm scrubbing. Now that heart is beating fast. And that's a rhythm I can dance to. I'm mighty glad I got a chance to. With one big heart that's beating fast. I've had enough of just passing by life. With the rest of them, with the best of them, I can hold my head up high. Somebody watch out here. One, two, three, four, five. Doing my own thing now. I said the world. Where well, money I'm ready is the same. Counting things I need. Put out white and that's the truth And get a brand new man while I got my youth If you had started ringing the bell Got nothing to do with man at all When just a cathedral You're bringing me down Hey friend, welcome to my channel Karina Lude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Today we are talking about the iconic Pearl Bailey. I love me some Pearl Bailey so much. She doesn't get talked about often, but I'm putting you guys on because not too many people in this generation knows about Pearl Bailey, but in her days, definitely she was that girl, that it girl. Girl. I love listening to her sing her voice very soulful very jazzy tune she has so much charisma so much passion so much skill and she knew how to engage a crowd and I love that about her and she was so well loved from her family to her children to just her environment she just was always a positive vibe and made so many friends and in Hollywood and she was so deep into theology so it always uh, made her that much more likable to me in 1974 she became the first african-american to receive the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award. She received the Presidential Medal of Freedom on October 17, 1988, and she put her name and fame to good use by raising awareness about HIV AIDS. She was also a supporter of programs to increase youth literacy. Now let's get into her childhood real quick. Bailey was born on March 29th, 1918 to the Reverend Joseph James Bailey and Ella Mae Ricks Bailey in Newport News, Virginia. She was born and raised in Newport News Bloodfields neighborhood and attended Booker T. Washington High School and neighboring Norfolk, which was the first city in the area to provide access to higher education for African Americans. It appeared that her family was holding together, but behind the scenes, they were in shambles. Both Bailey and Pearl's parents argued frequently, and Pearl's mom finally had enough after a particularly heated argument one week. She uprooted her kids all the way to Philadelphia. However, there was no happily ever after for Pearl because her mother remarried. The family was poor, so even teenage Pearl had to pitch in and help. Pearl Bailey was just 15 years old when she went to work as a cleaner for wealthy white families in Philadelphia. When Bailey was only 15 years old, she made her debut on a concert stage. Her brother Bill Bailey, just starting out as a tap dancer himself, encouraged her to compete in an amateur competition at Philadelphia's Pearl Theater, but unfortunately her engagement was cut short and the theater closed without paying her. Bailey learned from her night out at the club that she could find other work besides polishing houses. Then she entered and went on to win another amateur contest at the Apollo Theater. After that, there was no turning back and she soon found herself performing on the vaudeville circuit and even making the trip to New York City with them. There was never any extra money after she paid her rent and bought her groceries given her limited resources, Pearl had to accept less than ideal gigs. As early as the 1930s, Bailey was performing, performing with her band of R&B all over the East Coast, beginning in the Black Nightclubs of Philadelphia after joining the USO in 1941, Bailey entered American servicemen overseas. On tour, she encountered a great deal of racial prejudice. She couldn't stay in the same hotels or eat at the same establishments as her white tour mates. She even had one time in a club she went, she went in and one of the male guests, which was a white man, attacked her, just started attacking her for no other reason than her just being black. He didn't even know that she was one of the performers, just started attacking her. I couldn't imagine living in those days. I could not even imagine. She ended up relocating to New York after the tour and after finding success on her own in nightclubs, she started performing alongside other musicians like Cab Calloway and Duke Ellington. Bailey made her Broadway de debut in St. Louis, Woman in 1946. She impressed the judges enough to take home the Donaldson Award for Best Broadway Debut Performance. Bailey kept performing on stage and screen as well as touring and releasing new albums. 
Bailey made her TV debut on the early CBS sitcom Faye Emerson's Wonderful Town. Bailey hosted her own variety series on ABC, The Pearl Bailey Show, until May 1971, which featured many notable guests, including Lucille Ball, Bing Crosby, and Louis Armstrong, which was Louis Armstrong's one of his last appearances before his death. She continued to lend her voice to cartoons also after her 1971 show ended, appearing in films like Tubby the Tuba and the Disney's The Fox and the Hound. It wasn't until 1975 that she made her Broadway return, this time as Dolly in a production of Hello Dolly that featured an all-black cast. When Betty Ford was trying to broker peace in the Middle East in October 1975, she invited her to perform at a state dinner at the White House for Egyptian President Anwar Sadat. Also, I loved her in Carmen, the movie Carmen with Dorothy Dandridge. She was just a spitfire. She wasn't like the lead star Dorothy Dandridge was, but she was definitely memorable, fashionable. At the ripe old age of 67, she graduated with a theology degree from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. She spent seven long years in school before she graduated. She studied philosophy with Wilfred DeSan at Georgetown. Bailey later became a regular in the commercials for Duncan Hines, where she sang Bill Bailey Bailey, once you come home. She has promoted such products as Jell-O, Westinghouse Appliances, and Paramount Chicken. In her later years, Bailey wrote several books, The Raw Pearl, 1968, Talking to Myself, 1971, Pearl's Kitchen, 1973, and Hurry Up America and Spit, 1976. In 1975, she was appointed Special Ambassador to the United Nations by President Gerald Ford, a position she held under three presidents. And on January 19, 1985, she appeared on a nationally televised broadcast gala that night before the second inauguration of Ronald Reagan. And in 1988, Pearl Bailey, received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Reagan. Nixon appointed Bailey a Republican to the country's Ambassador of Love in 1970. She participated in several UN conferences and later appeared in a presidential campaign ad for Gerald Ford in 1976. And I just wanna let you guys know that if you know the history of America, most black people in America were Republicans. It's just now with recent times, there's been like this shift and the Democratic Party has worked really hard for that. But you'll see that in, as we do a lot more breakdowns for these old glamorous uh, black starlets and stars on the male side that majority of them probably like 99.9% .9 of them were Republicans. Isn't it funny how times have changed? It's so funny. She was awarded the Bronze Medallion in 1968, the highest award conferred upon civilians by New York City. And as far as her personal life, in her younger years as an adult, Bailey experienced several unsuccessful marriages. She divorced John Randolph Pinkett four years after marrying him, citing physical abuse. He was jealous of her performance lifestyle and even hit her with a phone and later split her head or her weapon. Like, I, I can't say weapon for YouTube but you know bang bang pow pow he basically hit her with it and split her head so she was very unlucky in love for a long time but what I love about Pearl Bailey is she discovered herself find her worth and really worked on herself and really found happiness in the end. After dating for a while, Bailey married jazz drummer Louis Belson on November 19th, 1952, in London only after four days after meeting each other. Yes, she married her husband after four days of meeting each other. Belson was a white man who, in many articles and references and documentaries I watched, he, he would tell people that he was Haitian, like he was a Haitian white, yes, because in Haiti, the French were the ones who colonized us before you know we got rid of all of that. And there's a lot of white people that were French, were Haitian, like my grandfather was a white Frenchman. So there was a lot of white people that would come from, that were born in Haiti, that were Haitians or that mixed around with each other. So her husband was passing off as a Haitian, but I believe, I don't know, I'll say that I believe he was actually white and it was because of the segregation laws and it was extremely difficult for them to marry you know, a black woman marrying a white man um, at that time. Though many of the starlets ended up doing it, it was really, really not popular when she was doing it. So it almost had to be, I'm not American, I'm not part of this, because it was just like American white males. It was kind of seen as a disgrace for them to be in love with like a black woman. At the wedding, Belson played the drums to keep everyone entertained and Bailey couldn't stop talking about how happy she was. They stayed together as husband and wife for nearly 38 years until her passing in 1990. Belson was white and six years younger than Bailey. Yep, Belson's dad, her husband's dad, reportedly didn't approve of the marriage because of Bailey's race, which was 
like I said, uncommon at the time. According to an article published on Jet Magazine at that time, Belson Sr., her father-in-law, told Bailey that interracial marriage was out and that he wasn't in the mood to have a colored granddaughter, end quote. Midway through the 1950s, they adopted a son named Tony D.D.J. Belson. The family's daughter was born on April 20th, 1960, and in 2004, Tony Belson, her son, passed away. They all died so young. Five months after her father's death on February 14, 2009, the daughter, Dee Dee Belson, passed away on July 4, 2009 at the age of 49. So there was no more legacy left behind for Pearl Bailey. On August 17, 1990, Bailey passed away at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia. Coronary artery disease was the cause of the death, and as determined by autopsy more than 30 years ago, Bailey was diagnosed with heart problems. As for Bailey's final resting place, that would be at Rolling Green Memorial Park in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Louis Belson, her husband, the love of her life, only said at the time of her death, I've lost my best friend and he never went on to remarry. I, I thought that was so cute. When they spoke about it, um, him after her death, it was like he was so sad, you know? He lost his best friend, his partner, and it's like the kids almost were sad too. They just all one by one passed away. Ugh, I can't imagine. But this is all I have for Pearl Bailey. I really think you guys should get familiar with her songs. Go ahead, watch some of them here on YouTube. You can watch Carmen, some of the movies that she was in, she starred in. I really, really love seeing her perform better than anything else. She just is enigmatic. And she also has a cookbook, okay? Check that out. I love to cook, so I definitely have that on my shelf. And she has several books. She was an author. She was grinding at a time where you see how you have celebrities now that are multifaceted. They have perfume lines. They do cartoon voiceovers. They do movies. They sing. They have podcasts, whatever. Like, they just multifaceted. She was one of those people that, at the time, most celebrities wasn't branching out so much like that. And she was doing it. She was lending her voice to cartoon characters. She was performing, going on tours, doing doing movies, writing books, you know what I mean? And so involved in politics, getting medals and all of that, advocacy, and even, you know, trying to sell war bonds and stuff at that time. She just was a hard worker. So I admire her, I love her. Comment below who else that's not as known like that that you guys would like me to do a video on. Also, if you like the song that you're listening to, in the background the link is in the description support my brother's music i love you guys comment below who else would you guys like to see until next time